How's it going? It's finally time to give you my version of an intro to X lights. I am not an expert on X lights. In fact, I've just barely learned how to use it myself. But when does that ever stop me from making a how to video? Here we go. If you've never heard of X lights, it's the software that lets you make those crazy cool holiday light shows. If you've ever driven by one of those houses that has a radio station playing music and all kinds of lights and trees and candy canes dancing and swaying to the music, chances are pretty dang good that they made all that happen using X lights. X lights is free to use and you can download it at xlights.org. And they have versions for Windows, Mac, and Linux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get WLED controllers working with X lights. I'll go through how to connect X lights to the WLED controllers on your network, how to set up your layout and tell X lights where all your LEDs are, and how to add simple effects and get them to show up on your lights. I am sure that when I'm done, you're still going to have a lot of questions and you're probably going to need help along the way. As always, I'm happy to do what I can. But like I said, I am not an X Lights expert. Thankfully, a lot of good people that use X Lights are willing to donate their time to help noobs like us. To get their help, on the main xlights.org page, there's a Zoom meeting button. Using Zoom meeting requires a little download and setup, but it's nothing you need me to walk you through. In that Zoom meeting, there are real life people that are willing to help. It doesn't matter what time of day it is or where you are in the world, there's probably somebody in the Zoom meeting that knows how to do what you're trying to do. So before you give up, make sure you pop in the Zoom meeting and see if you can get some help. And even though X-Lights is free, if you find it useful and it brings joy to you or the people around you, if you've got the opportunity, donate to help support the project. Now that's enough yapping. Let's get this sucker set up. If you've been following along with me, then you're probably using WLED to control some cool addressable LEDs on your house. Before you start using X-Lights, I recommend that you make a spreadsheet something like this. This is the list of all of my WLED controllers. The important things to include on this list are the name, the IP address, the number of LEDs, and then leave a column for universes. Now when you have X lights opened up, the first thing that we're going to do is start adding controllers. All of these WLED controllers are going to communicate with X lights using the E131 protocol. So we're going to add E131. We're going to use unicast, which means you need to put the IP address in this box. Your IP addresses are going to be different, and if you don't know what they are, the best place to find them is in the WLED app. I'm going to start with my front controller, and the IP address ends in 205. So now I've got the IP address for that controller here. My least favorite part about X lights is the way it handles channels and universes and nodes, and it's terminology that is super confusing for a newbie like me. So a universe in X lights is made up of a maximum of 510 channels. Each channel is an individual LED. In the lights that we've been using, there are actually three LEDs in one pixel. So the maximum number of pixels that you can have in a universe is 170. Anytime you've got a controller that's managing more than 170 pixels, as far as X-Lights is concerned, it will be controlling multiple universes. Again, I wish this wasn't the way it is, but this is the way it is. So looking at my first controller, there are 182 pixels. Because that's more than 170, it needs to be two universes. What that means is in this E131 setup box, my starting universe is going to be universe number one. The number of universes is going to be two. I don't need to change the universe size. In the description, I'm going to put the name that I've given my controller. And under controller type, I'm going to use ES Pixel Stick. And that's one controller. Hit OK and hit Save. Let's add another one. Next on my list is Entry. Again, we want Unicast. I put in my IP address for that controller which ends in 207. My front controller started at universe number one, and that controller consists of universe one and universe two. So the next controller needs to start at universe three. I'm gonna keep track of the starting universe for each controller in this column. 
the entry controller has 150 pixels, which will fit in one universe because we can have 170 in one universe. So I can leave the number of universes at one. The universe size I'm not going to change. I'm going to put the name in again, and I'm going to set the controller type to ES Pixel Stick. And save. Now I just keep on trucking. Another one, Unicast. IP address, 206. Entry, started on universe 3, and it only used one universe. So top, which is the next one for me, will start on universe 4. And it's 150 pixels, so it will only be one universe also. So the starting universe here is 4. The number of universes is 1. Size is still 510. And then I give it the name. Choose ES Pixel Stick. And OK. Save. And the next one. Unicast. IP address, which ends in 208. The previous controller started on universe 4. And it was only one universe because it was 150 pixels. So this one, upper, will start on universe number 5. And it's 124 pixels, so also just one universe. So over here in the setup box, starting universe is 5. Number of universes is 1. The size stays the same. Keep the name. Select ES Pixel Stick for the controller type. OK and save. This next controller on the side of the house has an IP address that ends in 84. The starting universe of the previous one was 5. It only used one universe. So the starting universe of the next one can be 6. So starting universe number over here is 6. This one has 173 pixels. So it needs to be two universes. Just barely. <laughs> so it'll be two universes. The size of the universe stays the same. Name, ES Pixel Stick as controller type. OK, and save. And then my final one, unicast, then IP address, ends in 128. Starting universe for the previous one was 6, but it was 2. So it uses universe 6 and 7. So the starting universe of the next one is 8. Starting universe, 8. This one is 172. <laughs> so again, barely two universes. Somehow I feel like I'm wasting resources, but I'm not. Okay, give it a name. Controller type ES Pixel Stick. Okay, and save. Excellent. Now the next thing we need to do is go into each WLED controller and tell it which universe it is. So first I'll go to the front. The IP address ends in 205. Go to the settings. Then in sync interfaces, in the E131 section, this is where you designate which universe is the starting universe for this controller. This was the very first one, so the starting universe is one. I don't need to change anything here. Next on my list is the controller that ends in 207. So I go to that WLED interface, go to the sync interfaces. In the E131 section, I put the starting universe number in this box. Because the first controller used universe one and two, this one is universe three. And on the left-hand side there, I have the list from X-Lights. Or I also have the numbers in my spreadsheet. When you have your starting universe number in this box, save it. And I still don't know if it's entirely necessary or not, but I suggest a reboot. Can't hurt. Now you go through and do that for each of your WLED controllers. So for number 206, I go to Sync Interfaces, scroll down to E131. The universe number that it starts with is 4. So I make sure 4 is in this box. Save and reboot. Next controller is IP address 208. Sync interfaces, E131 section, starting universe 5. Over here, starting universe 5. Save and reboot. Controller number 84 starts on universe 6. There it is. And finally, number 128, because the previous one used two universes. This one starts on universe 8. Save and reboot. Now Xlights has the IP address and its own little internal universe designation for each controller. And each controller knows which universe it is. That's the link between the two. That had me stumped for a long time. But now it won't stump you. You're welcome. Now let's move on to the next tab. Up here, we're going to go to Layout tab. 
the first thing you should do is add a picture of your house. So go outside, take a picture of your house, put it on your computer. Then here where it says background image, click the little dots, select the image that you want to use, and then you can adjust things like the brightness so that it just barely shows up in the background and save. Now we want to start drawing our strings of lights. Just for my own sanity, I'm going to do it in the same order. So up here, I'm going to create a polyline. My controller on my house is here. So I click once there and then just follow the roof line. And it goes something like that. Then hit escape when it's done. Now over here where it says number of nodes, I wish it said pixels, but it says nodes. Back to my spreadsheet for reference, my number of pixels is 182. So number of nodes here is 182. Starting location is where the controller is. In this case, it's the green dot, so I leave it as green square. For this one, the starting channel is number one, so I can leave that alone. And finally, change the name right here. Save. Now let's do the next one. We're going to do another polyline. Something I learned from my X Lights Yoda Paul is when you draw your elements, you do it from left to right. So I'm going to start over here and follow this roof line. Escape when I'm done. Back to my spreadsheet, which tells me I have 150 pixels. So nodes is 150. Let's go ahead and put the name here now. The starting location is where the controller is. And in this case, the controller is over here. The green square is over here, but the controller is over here. So instead of green square, I hit the drop down and select blue square. Scrolling down a little where it says start channel, I want to change this. I'm going to select universe number and then back on my spreadsheet, my universe number is three. I could also put the IP address since I know what it is. This one was 207. That's not necessary, but probably can't hurt. So I've got name, number of pixels, the location of the controller, which is on the right side at the blue square. Not any of these blue squares in the middle though, just the blue square on the end. The IP address, universe number three, and the first channel on that universe. Did I mention that I hate the terminology universes and channels? Because I do. Save, and let's do the next one. Gonna draw another polyline. Gonna draw it from left to right. Here. There, 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 there. Escape when it's done. Back to my spreadsheet. This one is the top. It's got 150 nodes, aka pixels. The controller in this one is also over here on the right hand side where the blue square is, not where the green square is. So I need to change this to blue square. Then the start channel, open that up, go to universe number. This is 206, and it's universe number 4. 206, and it tells me universe number 4. <laughs> Great. Done. Okay, we got more. Another polyline. Start on the left, go to the right. This is the upper. There are 124 nodes. The node MCU is actually over here on this one, which is not the green square again, it's the blue square, so we're going to set it to blue square. So we keep the left to right when we're drawing our elements, but we need to designate which side of the string the controller is actually on, and that's what the starting location defines. Now we go down here to start channel, universe number, this one is 208, and it pops right in with universe number 5. All right, two more. This is a little funny because the picture I'm using doesn't actually show the whole display. So I need to do just a little bit of representative geometry. The line goes here initially, but then it goes all the way down the side of the house. So I'm just gonna draw a line. Now let's draw it like that. This one is the side. So we change the name to side. 173 pixels or nodes. The controller, again, is at the blue square instead of the green square. My controller's not here. It's actually at the other end of the string. And then my start channel is 84, which pops in my universe number 6. Save. The last one is just a line. And it's along the back of the house, but it pretty much connects with this side. So we're going to do this. Just draw a line along the back. 
Now we're on this controller. So that's rear. There are 172 pixels in it. The controller is on this side where the blue square is. And the start channel, universe number 128. Starts on universe 8. That's my layout. Next thing we want to do is make a group with all these models in it. So right click, then add group. I'm going to name it capital A-L-L. -L. And then down here at the bottom, I can select all these models and move them over to models in group. Now they'll all be in this all group. Now the last part here happens in the sequencer tab. A sequence in X-Lights is the show. That's where you actually designate what lights do what. When you go to the sequencer tab, you need to start a new sequence. Everybody wants musical sequence. So select musical sequence. You need to pick a song. We're going to pick Hail to the Victors. The brain in these little WLED controllers is not super big. So we probably want to stick to 20 frames per second. And we can just hit quick start and that will bring in all of our models and it brings in the song. All these crazy cool little symbols here are the effects. To get an effect to play on a certain element, you just drag it from up there to where you want it down here, and it'll show you in the preview window what it's doing. Stretch that out so that it covers the area that you want, and put a few more on different places. Once you've thrown some effects in here, hit render, and then play. On each of these effects, you can change the colors. So select the effect. And then up here in the colors, you can just change the colors. After you've made any changes, render again. And finally, to get your show to output to your lights, you click this little light bulb here, which is output to lights. This is where you're going to spend a lot of time. I'm not going to be able to show you what all these effects do or tell you how to design a beautiful effect. My role is to get you to this point. From here, you got to do your own tinkering, use your own creativity, and design the show that you think looks good. Now that was super simple. Well, not easy, but simple. <laughs> Make sure I've rendered it. Make sure my output to lights is on. And now I hit play and cross my fingers. Ah! <laughs> Look, it's working. We did it. We did it. Well, there you go. That was my super basic rookies only X lights getting started part one. If you want some more details on how to get more out of X lights, and I'm sure you do, then check out this fella at learning Christmas lights. He's got a bunch of playlists here, including a getting started in 2019 guide. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching till next time. Adios. If you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.